The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 7th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstances of these markets. We'll go figure out with those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. I'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. But if you've got a question and you can't call in, we've got your back. You can send me an email. Now send that up early and send it to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We begin our day with a rally in all the U.S. indices that we track and all the sectors with the exception of the XLY, which is off 19 cents. Uh, Dow's up 110 points, S&P 15, NASDAQ 48, Russell's up 14, Semi's up 11, Trendy's up 91. Gold's off six bucks, Silver's down a nickel. Lights Recruit is off 38 pennies, Natural Gas is up a penny, and a 30-year Treasury up 27 ticks, printed out at 117.02. Our leader in the clubhouse to the upside, what is micro strategy? 46 bucks, 3.6%. Mercado Libre, $37. Fabrinet up 26 bucks. Sterling Infrastructure up 14 and Costco is up 13 bucks. Our leaders to the downside, Trans Digital Group off 36 bucks, nearly 3%. Builders First Source is off 32 bucks, 16%. Monolithic Power Systems, 21 bucks, 3%. Act at Core Inc. is off 18 bucks, 10%, and Ferrari is racing to the downside off about uh, 18 bucks. That's a 4% move to the downside. So we got movers and we've got shakers, but let's go figure out what this equity market is doing out here. It really ties into a question that came in, so I'll bump this up to the first, which from John inside the Tiger's End, his question is in the S&P 500, the ES Mini, whatever instruments we might use, is there anything in the charts to suggest a rally extension out there? So let's begin the day. By first taking a look at our spot volatile mix, and we know that that is trading well below its 50 day exponential moving average. It is targeting that lower Bollinger Band at the 1322 level. If in fact it goes to do that, that would suggest that the rally in the ES Mini and the SP 500 would uh, continue to move higher out there. So that's item number one. If we take a look at what the equity futures are doing right now. You can see in the upper left-hand corner is the ES Mini. It's approaching at 52.27 level. That's its initial price target of its A to B equals CD pattern. It's trading above the 0.618 retracement level. Perhaps what this is going to do, John, is make a move up towards that 52.54 level. We'll come back to that shortly. If we take a look at the NQ, the NQ has already attained the one-to-one -one price projection level at 18.222. It's trading above its 618. Perhaps it's going to go target the 0.786 retracement or its one-to-one 0.272 expansion of its B of its so I see the D lag, and that's anywhere between 18,367 and 18,449. If we take a look at the Dow, it's a little bit of a lagger. It still has a little bit to go to get up towards its initial price projection of its A to B equals CD pattern, and that's at the 39,204 level. And we come take a look at the Russell 2000, very close to attaining that initial price objective of 2089. 
on the actual high of today so far has been 2087. If it didn't get above that 2089 level, it's 0.786 retracement at 2113 and the uh, 1.272 expansion at 2121. So those would be the additional targets to the upside. Just because price gets the one to one, A to B equals CD does not mean that's the top out there. If you're going to see a top, you'll see them in some of the short term time frame charts. We'll take a look at those in a moment. Why are we going to wait a moment for that, Stevie? Well, that's a great question. And the reason is because of this chart. And this chart here answers John's question. And his specific question is, is there anything in my charts to suggest a rally extension? Now, he didn't say whether that rally extension would be tomorrow or the next day. And I'm also not saying whether it's tomorrow or the next day. But if we do take a look at the third panel on my screen out here, that is the advanced decline oscillator. Somebody might ask, what does the advanced decline oscillator actually mean? Well, it is a difference between two things. In this case here, it's two exponential moving averages. And those exponential moving averages are the 39 and the 19 period. Period. And that is the difference between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving averages of the advanced decline line, which quite frankly is getting near its all time high out there. Hasn't reached it yet, but it is moving higher. That's a bullish sign. But, but let me get to the real point out here now that I've given that explanation. If we take a look at that advanced decline oscillator, it is well above the plus 150 level. When you close above just plus 150, that's an indication of higher price to come. So, John, let's take a look at other instances of when price got back to this area out here let's take a look at this level this level is on the trading session of uh, November the 3rd. If you'd asked me that question then, we would have taken a look at the advanced client oscillator, saw that its reading had closed at 274 that day. Yes, we saw a little bit of a pullback, but what did that lead to? Higher price. If we go back to the next uh, instance of that, let's take a look at the trading day of July the 13th. We saw a little one bump one day to the downside, and what did price do? Went off to form higher highs. Let's come back out here to this trading session of March the 31st. We can see that that formed high. What did it do when you take a look at? Now, we're looking a look at the New York Stock Exchange, not the S&P 500 on the uh, stock portion of the chart out here. But what you can see is that led to higher price. Let's go take a look at the one before that. That came on January 13th. What did that lead to? It eventually led to higher price. We come back and take a look at that. I know you're going to get sick of this, but uh, it's the only way to really prove the point out here is to take a look at these data points. On October 28, 2022, uh, the advanced client oscillator got up at uh, close at 276. What did that even it did have a couple day pullback out there? What did that lead to? That led to higher price. So I think I've kind of covered this enough. I could do this all day long. I encourage you to do this on your chart out there. So if there is any tool to suggest that we should see higher price out there, that would be it. Now, look, it's not a guarantee. I'm not sitting here on this pedestal, my stool out here with a fresh injection in my back. I'm looking forward to this back pain going away. I'm hoping. And uh, um, and so anything can happen. But what we can see here predominantly, if we go back and take a look at this tool, if the question is, does that lead to higher price? The absolute answer has to be yes. But anything can happen out there. We're in a we're in a very difficult geopolitical time frame out there. Wars, all that kind of stuff going on. So any of that could absolutely have an impact on what the markets are doing. Now, let's go. Now that we've covered now that we've covered. Oh, there's one other uh, element out here that we can take a quick peek. And just with regard to today's activity, and that is how our equity futures trade in other currencies. We take a look at the ES mini, the S&P 500. We're trading it higher today, whether it's in the euro, the yen, the pound. That's the same for the NQ. And and that is the same for the Dow. So we're not seeing any selling overseas out there. When we come back, we'll go take a look at the ES mini charts and take a look at any areas of pause or concern. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. 
But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the uh, uh, charts here for the uh, ES Mini out here, uh, the daily time frame. We've already covered the A to B equals CD pattern. So if there were to be a bearish reversal candle that uh, would form, that would generate a sell the D point pattern. In this case here would be a Gartley sell pattern. We look at the five hour time frame chart. It's going to complete a TD9 count top at 2 p.m. So it says by 2 p.m. we could see a short term. Maybe it's long term, but we could see a top that forms then. If we look at the four hour time frame chart, it negated its TD9 count top a few hours ago. Uh, it still is also like the daily time frame, trading in A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. And that says for it to generate a top, that price would need to form a bearish reversal candle. Now, I will point out to you along this A to B equals CD leg on the four hour time frame chart, price is well on the left hand side we use the exact same angle if you don't then you're kind of losing a tremendous amount of information that's being generated for us we don't want to do that what this is telling us john is that this wants to make more than a one-to-one -one a to b equals cd to the upside so you go measure that 1.272 area if you were to do that you'd come back and say oh that's up at the 5278 area so that is a possibility or a likely possibility based upon its strength along that c to d leg with regard to the other time frame charts there's a possibility of for a 60 minute td9 count top that could go ahead and form at one complete at two so you could have the 60 minute time frame chart that's confirming a topping pattern at 2 p.m just as the five hour time frame chart is so i pay attention to those charts and then look to the intraday to see if there's any kind of a pullback but again after we took a look at that new york stock exchange the advanced client oscillator even if we get a pullback out here it really may not be the beginning of a big pullback as we should see higher price out there so that's the answer to your question uh john and that's the review of the equity uh, contracts out there, the equity futures and now let's go ahead and get to some of the questions that came in now so we're going to start with questions that came in yesterday that unfortunately i was unable to get to but i love that 
that because, man, I already have questions to go ahead and take a look at without having to ask all the favors of each of you to help to contribute, although I do love those favors. But anyways, the first place we're going to start is with NIO, and that is for SHOOT. I think that was for GTE, if I'm not mistaken out there. And if I didn't get that right, my apology. But the specific question was, after a TD9 count pattern, what can you expect after that? I believe that was the question. At least that's what I wrote down. Well, first, we'll take a look at NIO, which is Neo Inc. Uh, I believe this is a uh, it's ABA China uh, type ETF out there, but it doesn't really matter. At this stage here, what we know is that uh, this instrument negated its TD9 count top. Uh, th so the TD9 count top completed on May 3rd. The very next day, which was yesterday, on uh, May the 6th, price negated that signal. Now, if I open up the daily time frame chart, just because it negated its signal in this case here, doesn't mean it's getting ready to run to the upside. Well, why would you say that, Stevo? Because what price did yesterday was it all, not only did it negate the TD9 count, but what it also did was it got up to the TD9 count breakdown resistance level. That's at $5.86. So if this is going to move to the upside, we need to see a close, or you need to see a close about $5.86. If it doesn't do that, because and why? When you get back to a breakdown area, that in fact can be a top. When you get down to a breakout level, that in fact can be a bottom. So we are at a point in time where right now, even though it negated a topping pattern, there was another one right behind it out there. What might happen here is price might pull back to its oscillator and change line. Currently printed at 481, but I see the top of the profile for the daily time frame is at 468. So that would be your downside price target out there. And if price closes above 586, where is it headed to? Well, for that, we've got to go take a look at the weekly time frame charts. Interestingly enough, on the weekly time frame, this has a wave number seven bottom. That's letter G out there. That was confirmed last week. And last week also closed above the top of its daily profile. So the weekly time frame chart is suggesting that it wants higher price. Well, if it wants higher price, what's the monthly chart telling us? Turns out the monthly chart says, you know what, guys and gals? I'm up at a critical level of resistance. And that's that monthly oscillator and change line. And that's at $5.70. So ideally, what you'd be looking for here is a close on a monthly base of about $5.70. If you do that, well, that's going to take us above that $5.86. Well, it's not. It's, uh, so it's not just the 570, it's really that 586 area. But if we're wondering why did price stall where it did, it's really because of that monthly oscillator and change line, the TD9 count daily breakdown resistance level out there. What is this going to do next? I don't know the answer to that question out there. But price is up at resistance. It's not a resistance on the weekly time frame. So what's controlling the movement out here is the daily and the monthly out there. So thanks for waiting an extra day. Your question was, can it resume that move higher? Well, we answer that question too, and that would be a close above 586 would give you that signal out there. So thanks for waiting an extra day for that. Let's go on to Qualcomm. This is for San L inside the Tiger's Den, or usually inside the Tiger's Den. And if we take a look at uh, Qualcomm, the question was, I believe, is this an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside on the weekly time frame? So for that, we're actually going to change screens out here. Um, and we'll go back to the black background screens because it's easy for me to draw that pattern in. Plus, it's going to go ahead and give us what the retracement level was on the weekly time frame for Qualcomm on that B to C leg. So let's get that set of charts up here. It may already be populated, and it is. Perfect. So, and I wrote back uh, yesterday... Uh, to Sandell, or I posted this chart. Oh, I guess it didn't maintain that. I posted this chart uh, for him, and my answer to this question was no. It's not a. It's not an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. And the reason that I gave for that is because when we take a look at this B to C retracement. It is less than a 0.382 retracement. It's 29%. Typically, you get at least a 0.382 or much closer to that than 29%. If we take a look at the swing point out here, the swing point, uh, which was from March the 4th, had volume of 59 million shares. Last week, price closed above it with volume, 62. So we do know that price closed above the swing point out there, but we don't need to really use the A to B equals CD pattern. And, you know, I, I say it's not an A to B. I say it's not a valid A to B equals CD pattern. It doesn't mean that it won't go ahead and maybe fulfill a price objective. But we don't need to force things. If it just doesn't really fit, then, uh, you know, there's something else that we can use. If we, for example, what could we use on the weekly time frame chart to try to identify where its next price projection level might be? Well, we can use Fibonacci expansions. Let's go take a look at that and look at the last set of swing points on a weekly time frame. So there we would go ahead and start at the high 
from the uh, March 4th time frame and go all the way down to that uh, low, which is on April the 15th. And you can see right now that price above or it's testing that 1.272 area at 183.37. So this would suggest moving up to the 190 area. That's the 1.68 expansion level. But we take a look at what's going on in the monthly time frame. And this is the reason not to get too caught up. The daily time frame, in fact, does have an A to B equals CD pattern on the upside. If you take a look at its retracement, it's a small one that I put in there. You can see that was a 55% retracement. So on the week, Weekly, we got to an area of about 190, 1.618 expansion. Turns out the one to one on the smaller A to B equals CD pattern, which has been confirmed uh, with volume out there, is 194.67. We take a look at the monthly time frame chart. We can see that price is trading into a swing point from January of 2022. There were 208 million shares that traded then. We're at 57 million. It's only the seventh. I don't really know how to do the math to determine whether or not we're coming in with volume or not. It doesn't really matter. If we take a look at what transpired in the last couple of months first let's get that swing point we've been trading inside it so we uh, closed inside that swing point on a monthly basis back in march with 174 million 174 going into 208 last month it was with 154 million so you're coming to that swing point on a monthly basis with lighter volume that says resistance easily could be 193.58 steve rhodes with tfnn we'll be right back Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side by side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tigers Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side by side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. 
Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. Uh, on to a couple more requests that came in uh, yesterday. Uh, this is from Dan inside the Tiger's Den. Wanted to take a look at Shake Shack. And uh, yesterday, Shake Shack completed a TD9 count top. And at the time that it was doing that, it was also pulling back and testing its green oscillator and change line. It was testing a TD9 count breakdown level. Perhaps old resistance becoming new support out there. It certainly was yesterday. It certainly was today. Its overall signal, Dan, on the daily time frame is neutral. The only way it gets past neutral now would be to close below that oscillator and change line, and that's at 105.13. What we can see on the daily time frame is a bearish structured profile. What that means, the center of the profile, where both buyers and – you don't see those charts? Sorry. Thank you. Appreciate that. Just rewind everything that I just said out there, folks. Uh, you were seeing the you were seeing shake check charts, but not these. And these are the ones that you want to see out there. Make sure we get that. Here's the daily TD9 count top. Again, that top completed on the bar following bar number nine. We can see the price had also pulled back and tested and rejected that green oxygen and change line. Same thing this morning. So you have a daily topping pattern, but because key levels of support have held, what this does is generates a neutral signal. If we take a look at the weekly time frame, let me just make sure this is a correct. Yeah, ABC, D, E, F, yeah. So, um, no, we're not going with wave number seven out there. So, what we do have is basically nothing. I don't have a topping pattern out here. I take that back. There's an A to B equals CD on the weekly time frame, most certainly. So I can see that that has completed. And so what you've got is resistance out here, Dan. So the key level resistance, because it was a bear sash candle that confirmed that pattern, it's going to be the high of the prior candle. In this case here, that's at 110.90. If price is able to close above 110.90 on a weekly time frame, uh, this um, – Gets back to its merry way. So the weekly's got to sell the D point. The day, and by the way, it's also going to change on to sell the support out here uh, since that pattern, or at least over the last couple of weeks out there. So its overall signal is also neutral. So we're neutral on the daily, we're neutral on the weekly. The monthly chart got back to its TD9 count breakdown level at 441.49. Missed it looks like just by a smidgen out there, but that's okay. We use this more as a guideline than to get to the specific. So we're up at resistance levels, but the key here is that support is holding. So what's going on on the short-term time frame. Let's see if we get any better signals from Shake Shack on a short-term time frame. We'll begin with a 65-minute chart out here. And the 65-minute chart just shows us the support is held. So here on a 65-minute base, you want to see it close below 105.21. That could then take us back to its breakout level or maybe get an A to B equal CD pattern to the downside. But 99.52 would be its price target. Let's move this just to a 30-minute, see if there's anything out here that's of interest to us. And you've got a TD9 count bottom. So what this tells us, price rallied right up into resistance, the oscillator and change line. If price were to close above 107.56, Dan, you'd be looking at a move to the 110.77 area. So that's what I see when we take a look at Shake Shack. I'm not a big fan of their burgers, uh, but uh, their chart patterns out here, you got tops with basically neutral type signals out there. So thanks for waiting an extra day on that. Hope that helps. Let's go to our next request, which is ticker symbol O. And this is for uh, McGuppy inside the uh, Tiger's Den. And O is reality income corp out here. So what do we see when we take a look at this? You're really a long-term trader. So on a long-term time frame, I see a buy the D point pattern that formed, looks like back in November. And uh, price found resistance really at the bottom of its profile. It looks to me like that's its next price target, at least as of 1134 in the morning on May the 7th, because price is trading above that oscillator and change line. If it can stay above that, 5472 is it right now, then you likely should get back up to the 5652 level. We can also see that on a weekly time frame, because price has been below its um, uh, TAS market profiles, at 5582 is a level of resistance. So, how do you get to 56.52? You got to close about 55.82, but that would then be a positive because price would be back inside its profiles out there. On the daily time frame, let's open this baby up, see if we can figure anything out here. Was there enough of a retracement? And I'm going to go answer that question myself on a different chart to see what that retracement was. But was there enough of a retracement on that uh, move from the B to C level? And the answer is it's a 31% retracement. It's close, but no cigar. 
So what we do have out here, in fact, if I, I don't know why it's not turned on, but I'm going to turn it on right now. I believe we will see a new profile. Um, yeah. So in a moment here, we're going to get the new profile that is formed here on a daily basis for O. And it's below price. When a profile forms below price, McGuppy, that is a bullish signal out there. And a below price, now it doesn't mean price can't pull back to test those levels. And those levels being, or at least the first level that you'd be paying to attention to, would be 54.79. So I don't see a top on a daily time frame. There is new profile that formed below price. That's a, typically a bullish signal for you. And the weekly time frame, we've just in the monthly, we've identified your support and resistance areas. So hope that helps you out. You also wanted to take a look at OHI, not OIH, folks, but OHI. So let's go ahead and pull that set of charts up on our screen. OHI is uh, trading at about 31.20, and this is Omega Healthcare. And Omega Healthcare is trading above the top of its profile. It is trading above its green oscillator and change line, which was tested and rejected this morning. Key level of support. This remains bullish in a bullish breakout mode for the daily time frame. The weekly time frame is trading above its bearish structure daily profile and its green oscillator and change line. It's suggesting another attack at that TD9 count breakdown area, which has held as resistance, and that's at 31.82. Um, on the monthly time frame, you've got a resistance area that it's dealing with right now, the center of its bullish structure profile, and that is at 31.28. We have not seen two monthly closes above that level. What you'd be watching for there, um, McGuppy, is two consecutive closes above that area. If you get that, then this instrument should head up to 33.89 for the longer term. And you are a longer term trader, at least with regard to these two instruments. So thanks so much for waiting an extra day, and I hope that that information helped you out. Duncan Steve wants to take a look at AMD for direction for the day. You know, Duncan, right now, what I can see is price trading above yesterday's high, and as long as that remains in effect, price should go target its profile levels. And the profile levels will be 159.58 to 161.62. We can see that price has already gotten up to that level maybe a week ago out there, and because this was a bear, bullish structure profile, price was below it for more than two consecutive days. You don't see the charts? Again, did I do that? Golly jeepers. Thank you, Dan. Mm. Did I not have the charts up there for... Let me just do one more thing here. Well, let me finish off AMD, and then I'll go back and take a look at that lesson because I may not have had the charts up there. So uh, we'll do that real quickly. But in this instance here, with regard to AMD, we can see that that bullish structured profile price had closed below it for more than two consecutive sessions, and the rally was just a counter trend move. And then we saw price move back down, retest its lows, make a lower low out there. I don't have a, I do actually, yesterday was a confirmed Rogeman to indicator bottom because of the gap to the upside. That was its bullish reversal candle. So I would say 159.58 to 161.62. At 159.33, you've got resistance. That's the bottom of its weekly profile. Monthly chart looks pretty good. A consolidation with inside its profile, support at 106.54. Resistance at 200.46. But because price is above that green asset and change line, that's a bullish signal. So you wanted to know the direction? I think the direction is to the upside. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. 
former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member. Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. A couple more requests have come in, one for AQST. I apologize, I didn't write down who made that request. In this case here, we've got a wave number seven bottom pattern that went ahead and uh, formed on April the 30th. And now we just have a consolidation with inside its profile. It's a bullish profile and structure. So if you were to see a close below 318, that would suggest that price would go back and target 263. The profile support zone or the buy zone, as we'll call it, is 318 to 330. Your resistance up at 367. The weekly time frame chart has a wave number seven top, letter G out there. What is that suggesting? That's suggesting a further pullback. It's trading with inside its profile. Its downside price target would be 275. So again, 318 is going to be key. Price closes below that. We're at 263 to, um, to 275. On a monthly time frame, you have a sell the D point pattern, or it looks like you do out there uh, that was from last uh, or two months ago it had a bearish shooting star candle that suggests a pullback to 198 you don't have to worry about whether that chart's really going to come to fruition because you need to see closes below profile levels on the uh, daily and the weekly time frame out there if we take a quick peek at what's going on from a short-term basis for aqst this is trading below profile as well on a 30-minute basis suggest to move to 322 out there so that's what we see we take a look at its charts out there and thank you for that request whoever it was that actually asked. Marty wanted to take a look at ticker symbol CLSK out there. So let's pull that up on our screen. And CLSK is trading at $17.10. It's trading with inside a bullish structured profile. And Clean Spark has a buy zone of 1601 to 1678. We can see that that oscillator and change line is acting as resistance. If price can close above 1743, probably 1745, that would signal a move up to 2062. And 2062 is the top of its daily profile. That's where the sellers reside. On a monthly, a weekly time frame out here, we have a Rhodesman to indicator top. Price remains below its green oscillator and change line at 1830. As long as price remains below that level, you could see a move back to test its buy zone support area. That is between 1333 and 1502. The monthly time frame, I do not see any kind of a topping signal yet. I see a new profile that has formed. The top of that profile is at 978. Wow. And then we're trading above that. 
So that is uh, bullish. But we can see the 1848 level has been a struggle. That's a TD9 count breakdown area. We saw one monthly close above it, last month back below it. So that really is a resistance area as well, that 1848 level. So CLSK, um, I just simply right now be watching that daily time frame, the daily oscillator change on to 1744 and the bottom of its profile at 16 to 1. Those would be the areas to be watching out there, Marty. So I hope that that review helped you out, provided with information that will uh, assist you in navigating this trade. Lee wants to take a look at uranium, URA being the ticker symbol. That's the ETF out there. So we take a look at URA on a daily time frame, looks to be in a bullish breakout mode. Why? Because price is trading above its green oscillator and change line combined with trade above the top of its profile, which it closed above yesterday. So it looks like this is a full uh, profile change in trend signal should continue to move higher. Move higher to where? Well, that's a great question because it's moving back into a prior swing point. That was a Rhodesman indicator top on the weekly time frame and the monthly is a TD9 count top. So let's check out the volume, although we're only a short, short time into that week. But the weekly volume on February the 2nd uh, came in at uh, 16 million shares last month. Uh, last week, it was 17 million shares. So price was moving to that swing point with volume last week. That suggested it should go test that high. And that's at 32.60. So far in a day and a couple hours of trading, we're at 5 million shares. Again, the number that you'd like to see this at end of the week be more than 16 million shares as it takes on that resistance zone. On a monthly time frame, it's the same price point at 32.60. But that's 66 million shares on a monthly basis. So I don't know. Your question was, is this a double top? It's potentially a double top, but the daily time frame says I still want to move higher. For example, the daily swing point takes us back to February 1st, 2024, 5.1 million shares as we were moving into, we closed into it yesterday with only 3 million shares. Today so far, this has done 1.8 million shares, two hours of trading. So you're moving in with similar type volume out there. I can't say that this is a double top. I don't, other than moving back to that resistance level. So watch the volume at day Zen Lee for kind of a signal. Continue to watch that weekly volume. Um, you're trading above resistance areas out there. The question is, can it take out that ultimate resistance level? And I don't know the answer to that. But if you ask me, would I stay in the position? You're a long-term holder. Yeah, I don't have any reason for you to not stay in the position. You're trading above resistance and then trading into swing point resistance out there. So I hope that helps you out, Lee, and uh, best of luck to you there. And let's uh, monitor this together you know, over the next couple of uh, days or so. Vic is asking the question, should Vic stay in, ticker symbol, FGPR out there? So let's take a look at FGPR, see if we can see any kind of topping patterns. Well, the daily time frame answers that question for us in a heartbeat. It says, stay. Don't even think of folding those cards out there. Why? Yesterday was a TD9 count top. Guess what today is? A negated TD9 count top with a wide-ranging bar. This thing suggests that it wants to move higher. Now, move higher to where out there? And that's a great question. Let's open up the monthly time frame chart. Move higher to where? Move higher to 2421. You've got a beautiful TD9 count bottom, a beautiful Rhodesman indicator bottom, for that monthly time frame, you're trading above resistance levels. Now, look, there is some resistance right here at a swing point. That was established by a bear sash candle. So you do have some resistance out here at about 1875. Um, but that's not a reason to sell. I'm just letting you know there's a little bit of a battle uh, up ahead. And if we look at the weekly time frame chart, uh, there is no signal whatsoever of any kind of a top. I think you've got to stay. Well, you've got to do what you want to do. But the charts are saying there is no reason to sell, uh, but there's nothing ever wrong. I don't know where you're at in that position with taking some profits, uh, having a free trade, meaning to get all your capital back, anything along those lines. But FGPR looks pretty darn good. So nice trade there, Vic, and I uh, hope that that helped you out. Um, dude would like to take a look at a position in BAND, B-A-N-D. I love bands out there. My ears, you know, I think that's why I have had um, tinnitus for like 30, 40 years. 
out there sat in too many uh, sat in front of too many speakers. But there's nothing better than a good band. And as we take a look at a good band, we're talking about their stock chart out here. It doesn't look like a band aid to me. This is band width, and this band width wants to trade higher. Daily time frame, you're only in bar number five. You're trading above resistance. The same can be said about the weekly, although from a bar standpoint, it's only bar number two, wave number six out here. It's got a resistance level at 25.79. If band can take out 2579 out there dude this thing is headed higher headed higher where well the next resistance level maybe it's the same one i don't know is from the monthly time frame chart and that's from february last february 2023 and that's at 2907 so it looks to me like this wants to trade to 2579 if it clears 2579 then you got 2907 if it clears that then you're headed higher i don't have any other patterns really that i can uh, go ahead and type in here uh for you but uh Band looks muy bueno. You're looking for an entry point. Oh, boy. Well, I think that ship sailed. So, I mean, you're going to have to get down in the weeds on a real intraday time period chart. I don't see anything on the 65. Does the 30 minute have any kind of a top? I don't see anything on that either. Um, Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors.
Welcome back, uh, folks. We're going to go ahead and finish the show out by taking a look at the uh, 30-year Treasury and its ETF, the uh, TLT. When we take a look at the 30-year Treasury out here, daily time frame shows that we're now trading above profile resistance. You're in bar number five. Uh, this has a buy the D point pattern out there. This suggests higher price. The 30-minute chart says you could get a short-term timeout between 12 noon and 1 p.m. So by 1 p.m., there should be or is likely to be a TD9 count top. Now, that may just result in a little pullback to its oscillator and change line currently printed about the 117 level the two hour time frame chart may go on to form a td9 count top but i don't think that's likely to be uh today out here um, so I just watched that 30 minute uh, chart there for some intraday type time signals out there. If we go take a look at the TLT. The TLT, we're going to use some different time frames out here. The reason being is because these are broken down into equally bar, equally time bars for it's a nine, uh, 390 minute day out there. Uh, but where did I put those? Uh, radio show multi time frame. Here we go. So now when these come up, so now we're taking a look at the TLT. And on the TLT on a daily time frame, this is in bar number five today out here. Uh, this is trading above profile resistance, this is suggesting higher price. If I take a look at the weekly time frame, we are trading above the top of its profile as well. Let me just make sure of that on a weekly basis. Yeah, that's at 90.81. And we're trading above that. So that is bullish. That suggests that we continue to move higher. It's 65 minute time frame chart. And that's going to complete at 1245. It's going to form bar number nine out there. Uh, the next time frame after that would be just at 65 minutes. I guess that would be 1245. So you're at, uh, but you can figure that would be 150 in the afternoon out there is when that pattern could complete. So those would be the short term topping signals that I see out there for the TLT and for the 30 year treasury. As always, thanks so much for that request. Uh, lastly, let's go back to the ES mini out here. Nothing has changed. Let's see if we have just, uh, we're not going to have enough seconds to put up the NQ out there. So to summarize on the ES mini, there's a TD9 count top that's going to go ahead and complete at 2 p.m. Watch that high. If price starts trading above that high, that's a suggestion that we continue to move higher. Otherwise, we start pulling back the support, which on the five-hour time frame is at about 51.89. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming out here. I'll be back with you tomorrow on wonderful Wednesday. Please have a terrific Tuesday and be safe out there. Take care.